What's up everyone, Eli here, back for a CD collection video. Um, we'll just pick up where we left off last time, which is uh, we're still in the G's. Uh, we're actually approaching the end of the G's. I think this might be the very last video for that before moving on to H, so we're getting there. Um, I, uh, I will have a new stuff video coming pretty soon. I've actually bought some pretty cool stuff lately that I'll be showing. Um, <laughs> you know, every time I say I probably won't, I do have a nice little stack of some cool shit. Um, it's kind of funny lately. I feel like I've definitely been buying more movies, more horror movies than, uh, than, you know, any music format. Um, and I, I was kind of thinking of why maybe, I, you know, lately, yeah, I've been in the mood to watch more movies than normal. Um, but also I just feel like, I don't know, as far as like new releases in 2021, there's not much out there that's really like blowing me away. I, I, I definitely don't feel like this is the strongest year for metal. Um, and I could be wrong, and also, I mean, I, I will, I'll be the first to admit there's dozens and dozens and dozens of releases that I haven't heard, so they're, they're not yet on my radar, but either way, I've just really been enjoying, like, just super delving into horror movies yet again, and uh, I also have some other cool stuff to show, like action figures that I bought, because as some of you might know, I don't show it a lot on this channel, but I do, I do collect, like, toys and stuff, just not as much these days. I don't like to spend a whole lot of money on, on stuff like that. But uh, anyway, it'll be fun. Um, I've just rambled on and probably lost half my viewers, but uh, that's okay. Uh, let's get on with the music, shall we? Uh, we're going to start off with, uh, you might have seen this recently, and I only picked this up maybe a month or two ago. Uh, we have the debut album from uh, Godflesh, Street Cleaner. Now, a lot of you are probably massive fans of this album and, and band in general. Um, I'm not necessarily, I've never been huge into Godflesh. I do like some of the early stuff and the later stuff I just haven't heard. Uh, but it's not something that I reach for often, but, uh, I do feel like it's something that I could probably get more into, even though I have been kind of like off and on listening to Godflesh for probably over 20 years. But, uh, yeah, this is their debut album on, uh, Eric Records, Eric in Combat. Um, as I said, when I bought this album, when I showed the video, uh, I didn't know Combat ever had a hand in anything this band did, so that's kind of cool. Of course, it was distributed by uh, Relativity Records, or licensed by Relativity. Um, so yeah, this is their debut from 1989. Um, this is, I think, yeah, this is a this is a promo copy, but I believe this is a, yeah, this is a first press. Um, not that that matters to me that much, but uh, yeah. Um, obviously, I'm not going to go into who Godflesh are. Um, you probably already know, and if you do know, you probably know more about the band than me, but, you know, it was basically started by Justin Broderick of Napalm Death after leaving, I believe it was after he left Napalm, not while he was still in the band. Could be wrong about that, but anyways. Um, yeah, this is just classic, uh, industrial metal. Um, you know, very dirty, very, uh, cold and lifeless sounding, and pretty much, in my opinion, for what it is, it's pretty much perfect. I mean, I don't know if anyone ever really did industrial type metal better than Godflesh. Um, but, like I said, I'm, it's that's not really my genre of choice. But when I'm in the mood for it, um, Godflesh is pretty sick. Um, and next we have, this is the only thing I own on CD by any version of Grim Reaper. Louis, stop fucking licking yourself <laughs> throughout this whole video. As if I'm not losing people fast enough already. <laughs> Anyways, I, yeah, I don't have any of the original Incarnation of Grim Reaper on CD. I do have some on vinyl. But this is the first thing that uh, Steve Grimmett did under the uh, Steve Grimmett's Grim, uh, Grim Reaper. So this was self-released, Walking in the Shadows. Um, was this Dissonance Productions on the back? Um, but I, I believe it started out as a self-released album. So, anyways, this came out in 2016. I was actually given this by Marty, uh, Marty Worm. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming he probably listened to it and didn't really care for it. And I've only listened to it once, but I, I mean, I can understand why he gave this to me, why, or why he didn't want it. Um, it's not great. It's not bad. I mean, this version of Grim Reaper, if I remember correctly, I think it's some dudes from Onslaught. Um... I believe, yeah, I believe it's some dudes from Onslaught and obviously Steve Grimmett on vocals. Um, I've always liked Steve. First of all, he seems like a really cool dude. Um, but I've, you know, on a musical level, I have always enjoyed his vocals. Um, you know, he's in, he's probably in his 60s now. I mean, he doesn't sound, 
I, I, you can't expect him to sound like he did when he was in his 20s. Um, so I suppose he, his voice is aged okay. I mean, um, he, he definitely still sounds like, you know, classic Steve Grimmett. He just, you know, his voice isn't in the best condition. He's not going to be able to hit, you know, he doesn't have the range that he had 40 years ago, and you really shouldn't expect him to. Um, and musically, this is very well played. I mean, these guys are veteran musicians. Um, they're top-notch musicians as well. But uh, overall, you know, this album, like I said, I've only listened to it once, but I probably wouldn't give it more than a 5 out of 10. Um, it's just not something that uh, I feel really needed to exist. I mean, that's, you know, I don't get to make that decision. If it's if this is an album that these guys, you know, were passionate about and wanted to make and give to the fans, then that's what counts, but... Uh, yeah, 5 out of 10 for me. It's it's not terrible. It's certainly not great. It's It just kind of is. It just kind of exists. Um, you know, it, it has... It, it's, it's, it's a very much, you know, a classic heavy metal sound. Um, uh, you know, new wave of British heavy metal. Obviously, that's where, you know, Steve came from. It's good for what it is. Uh, I, you know, I would definitely... I think they have done stuff since this album, and I wouldn't mind checking that out and seeing if, you know, maybe they got their footing and maybe they've improved their you know the songwriting a little bit but uh yeah i don't know what do you guys think have you heard this album or have you heard like i said this was five years ago so i'm a, I, I believe they have another full length since um but surely they put out something else so should i check that out let me know what you think uh next we have two albums by the grotesquerie um the grotesquerie are a i don't i guess you could kind of call it a super group death metal band um you have, uh, first of all, you have Cam Lee from Massacre and Death on vocals. Um, and then you have guys like uh, Rogo Johansson, you know, from Sweden, um, you know, from uh, Paganizer and Rib Spreader and all the other 20 bands that he's in. Uh, and I, I, I actually always like the stuff that he puts out. So this is the debut album, uh, Tales, Tales of a Coffin Born. This is from, came out in 2010. Wow. I mean, it's 11 years already. came out on Cyclone Empire, which is, you know, as we know, a good death metal label. Um, this album is quite good. I actually like this one a lot. Um, not only is it a good, you know, just classic death metal sounding album, I really like the, the concept of this. I mean, the, the entire concept of this band is based around, you know, the writing of H.P. Lovecraft. Um... <clears throat> So this album has, uh, in between every song, it has narrations, you know, because it's very much a story-based album. Like, this is a total concept album. Um, and the narrations are done so well. Um, you know, most metal albums that have narrations usually are throwaway and forgettable, but uh, this one, I mean, the narrations just add tons of atmosphere um, and tons of emotion. Um, the story behind this album is very very powerful and very sad and just incredibly well written um but even taking that away if you stripped all the narrations and storyline away it's it's a it's a really good death metal album um highly recommend this one and they've they've done like at least two other albums since then i have one more this is 2012 um so the second full length i don't think this one is nearly as good this is, this is called The Facts and Terrifying Testament of Mason Hamilton. Um, I haven't, I, you know, I'll admit, I haven't spent nearly as much time with this. I've only had this for maybe a year or two as to where that other one I've had for probably at least five years. And I've listened to it way more. I've probably only heard this album once, but I can, I can definitely say so far I don't like it nearly as much. That said, it still sounds like the grotesquery and it's still a very good album. I just don't like it as much so far. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, if any of you have the grotesque albums or have heard them, you might have spent more time with me. So what do you think overall? Like, What do you think is their strongest? What do you think is their weakest? Because like I said, I only have two of the like three or four albums that they have. Um, I, would, I actually would really like to pick uh, the rest of it up. Next we have, like I think, like four albums. Um, all the stuff from this band, actually. Uh, we're going to talk about Gruesome, yet another uh, super group death metal band out of the U.S. <clears throat> um, this is their debut album, and it came out, I think, in 
2015, yeah, and I bought this as soon as it came out, as did a lot of people. We were all kind of excited. Um, and I think this album and band, really, I think totally lives up to um, expectations. So there's the back. Obviously, you can see Daniel Gonzalez, who is, I don't want to say a new... Um, a new heavy hitter in the, you know, in the world of death metal, but, uh, I mean, this guy's only been on my radar probably since around this time, um, but he's gone on to do a whole bunch of stuff. He's been, he's become kind of an in-demand, I don't know if you'd call him a session musician, but he's in uh, quite a handful of bands, like, um, high-profile bands even. He's just a, a, a phenomenal guitarist, that's why. And you also have Matt Harvey of Exhumed on, uh, guitar and vocals, you have Robin Mazin of uh, Durkata and and some other stuff, but I, I mainly know her from Durkata. You have Gus Rios on uh, drums. This, uh, Gus is in not Monstrosity. Uh, what uh, I believe he's in Malevolent Creation, and I, yeah, he's been in that band for quite some time. And he also has done um, a number of other things uh, that that I'm not as familiar with. But uh, anyways, this was the first debut album. So gruesome, not <laughs> the first debut, not the second debut. Um, nice old school looking CD. Very cool that Relapse did it like that. Um, so gruesome, as you you already know, uh, I won't I want to waste too much time on this. But gruesome was a basically a, a death tribute band. Um, that's that that was the whole point of the band from the start. Uh, it was never supposed to be anything more or anything less. Um, so basically every release they put out is kind of like their um, interpretation of a specific death album. This one, obviously, I mean, I think it's obvious which album this is kind of a tribute to. Uh, the Mighty Leprosy, which is probably my favorite death album. And I just uh, noticed the Ed Repka cover art, by the way. Very cool. Uh, I just enjoy this album quite a bit. Uh, this is, you know, the, definitely the one I, I reach for the most out of all the gruesome stuff. But it's all been really good. Try to put these in order. I got my phone right here to help me. Second one is going to be an EP, Dimensions of Horror. This came out in 2016, so you know, just the next year. Same exact lineup, um, same record label, Relapse Records. Like I said, this is an EP. This one is supposed to sound. Uh, this is this one's supposed to be like a, at least from what I've read, um, not a statement from the band, but reviews and stuff. This is a reinterpretation of the debut. Um, Death album, uh, Scream Bloody Gore, which is also one of my favorite Death albums. But uh, yeah, more really cool Ed Repka cover art. Um, this is, uh, yeah, six tracks. Still very good. Um, like I said, I've, I've enjoyed everything Gruesome has done so far. This next one came out, and this is another EP. I don't know why they followed an EP with an EP um, <laughs> one year apart. This came out in 2017, and this is. First of all, it's very short. It does have seven tracks. Um, so we're talking about the Fragments of Psyche. I guess I say it's short because I, whenever I listen to it, honestly, I skip a lot of it because... Uh, so there's only one new track on here, and that's the title track, which is very good. Um, it's got a, a re-recorded version of Choke on it, which is a death song from 91. And then the remaining five songs are actually, um, it's just the, uh, their death, uh, their death metal. It's their demo from 2014, but all the songs, I believe, pretty sure all those songs appear on the first album. So I don't really, I probably listened to those once, but I don't really need to, to listen to that anymore. So I, I only ever listen to the first two tracks now. And this is, you've guessed it, this is a, a reinterpretation of uh, Human. But I like the Human album a lot, and because I like it a lot, I think this should have been a full length instead of a EP with only one new song. But whatever, you know, maybe they didn't have a lot of time to to devote. Um, I, I, this is not a full time band. All these, all you know, all the members are in other bands. All right. So following that, we have this is the last uh, last full length they've done so far. Uh, and this is from 2018, we got Twisted Prayers, which is, you guessed it, this is a reinterpretation of spiritual healing. Um, I've never been a big fan of spiritual healing, to be honest. That's 
one of my least favorite, if not my least favorite, Death albums. But that's not to say that this isn't a good album. Still the same lineup, Relapse Records. Um, I listened to this one... I, I, I haven't listened to this one nearly as much as, as the others, but uh, it's still really good. Um, I love what Relapse did with the uh, an ode to combat records with the camo uh, on the CD. So this is, yeah, this is a really good album. It's got a, uh, a Possessed cover, The Exorcist, which um, Death were famous for covering as well. And that's oh, a sick song. They definitely nail it. Very good album. <laughs> this next one is a cool one. Obviously not something I'm going to listen to a lot, but it's just something that I always needed in my collection. Uh, this came out back in 97. This is a movie soundtrack. Soundtrack to the movie Gummo, which is a great movie. One of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. And this is, as far as I know, I mean, this was the first soundtrack I ever heard that had, like, real underground extreme metal on it. I mean, we're talking Absu, I Hate God, uh, Bethlehem, Burzum, Bathory, uh, Sleep, Ruheria, Niflheim, Mortician, and Mystifier. I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's even another movie soundtrack like it, uh, even since then. But, uh, yeah, I could be wrong. So, <laughs> I saw this movie, I think I saw this in, like, 98. So, I, to be honest, in 98, I hadn't really heard of any, any of those bands I just named. And I wouldn't really get into them until a couple years after this. So, um, yeah, it's just a cool soundtrack to have just for what it is. Um, like I said, not something I listen to often because I have the albums. All those bands I named, I have <laughs> the albums that the song is on. So, But it's still, for what it is, it's a very cool piece of history. Definitely check the movie out if you haven't seen it. Uh, just um, <laughs> expect to be disturbed, because you will be. Uh, this next one is an album that I have spent a lot of time with. In fact, this might be, I have a hard time remembering that far back, but this might be the first album I ever owned. Um, it wouldn't be this CD copy, though. I had it on cassette because, I, you know, I was buying cassettes when I was a kid. Um, CDs were still very new and still very expensive. Most people were still buying tapes. So this album came out in 1987, Obviously, I wasn't listening to it in 87, I was only 5, but I probably was listening to this by 91 or 92, and I'm talking about Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. Their second full-length album, this is the one that just skyrocketed them into superstardom. It's considered, to this day, it's considered a hard rock classic by many, many, many hundreds of thousands of people, millions maybe. Um, this album sold so many copies, uh, and it's still very revered to this day. I, to be honest, I think it holds up. I think it's still a great hard rock album. I just don't ever listen to it anymore. I don't, um, I don't listen to Guns N' Roses anymore, really ever. I might throw this on like every ten years, and I enjoy it when I put it on. But uh, it, you know, like I said, it's a band I loved as a kid. In fact, they were my favorite band at one point. But anymore, I just really don't listen to them. But uh, I know a lot of people still do, so that's pretty cool when you think about it. An album this old that, um, you know, you can't, you could probably turn on any rock radio station, and if you leave it on for at least an hour, you're probably going to hear a song off this album all these years later. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, stood the test of time, I would say. So, anyways, that is all I got. That's 10 CDs. Um, I know I never really live up to what I say I'm going to do next, so I probably shouldn't waste my time doing so, but what I want to do next, <laughs> we'll see if it happens. I am going to do a new stuff video probably within the next week, um, but I think you can expect from me my next video to probably be, um, I'm really wanting to get back to my tape collection, um, so I'm probably going to do tape collection video next and uh, my death metal t-shirts, so that's, if it means anything to you at all, I, I don't expect it to. But that's probably what you can look forward to, and I would really appreciate if you uh, check those videos out. I just enjoy talking to you guys as well. So, anyways, um, that's all I have to say for now. Um, Louis says hello, and uh, we will talk soon. Cheers, guys. Whoa, sorry. Say bye, Louis.